Hello everyone and welcome back. Era of Carthage here and we're at the Battle of the Groves. This should be interesting. I like the fact that they're using some different maps and yes, this is the Unconquered Sun mod, which is an overhaul, rebalancing, and adding of abilities in order to make factions more unique and make the battles a little more tactical and fun. And it goes with the Sub Commanders mod, which is what we're seeing here. So. This is going to be another large sub-commander's battle. This one is going to be Sparta, the Odrysians, and Carthage. And they're going to be taking on, it looks like, uh, is that... Oh, it's Armenia. Sorry, I was about to say, like, Tylus, and I was like, that's not Tylus. Armenia, Macedon, and Rome. So, it should be interesting. Let's take a second here to slow things down and look at the commanders that we have on the battlefield. Sparta is likely using Leonidas. They are, so they have Fight in the Shade, which is going to improve armor, missile block chance, morale fatigue. Going to be very cool. And he's got a Rally and Inspire here, uh, which should be a really nice ability there as well. So Leonidas is a really interesting commander, and then that's probably Hannibal out here. Indeed it is. So remember, Hannibal has two abilities, Thunderbolt and Outmaneuver. Outmaneuver will make units faster for a short time, allowing them to get around flanks um, or make a push. And then Thunderbolt will slow a small area of enemy units um, for a short time. Again, when used in combination, it's really quite effective. The Odrysians, I'm not familiar with their commander's name, but they do have this special ability, which is Mountain Rage, and it's going to give them, very importantly, extra missile block chance, and I'm assuming that's while they're charging forward. And then the second phase improves their armor, defense, and weapon damage. Very cool. It's almost like a, a very special type of charge for them, and they've also got this, this group second wind should be really cool. And then the Romans, let's go over here and check out their side. The Roman Legatus here uh, does have Presence um, and Loyalty of the 10th, which is the special abilities that Rome had in the game. And those are going to affect recharge rates and uh, melee defense, unbreakable, that type of thing. And then for the Armenians, they must have a special commander too, I would imagine. Oh, they've got Pride, which improves AP damage. And then they've got King of Kings, so this is going to be melee damage, morale, acceleration, charge bonus. That looks like it's meant to go along with their cavalry, but, I mean, could be useful on the infantry, too. So, neat, neat add there. And then Macedon does have Alexander. Alexander has two abilities. One is Hammer and Anvil, but they have not brought Alexander here. They brought the standard commander with Second Wind and um, Battle Rhythm, which, remember that most of these abilities have had changes, too, that improve them and, and make them not just be sucky, generic crap. Um, so the, the standard, when I say it's a standard commander ability, it's still probably better than what you're used to in the base game. Now let's take a look at some of the armies here and see what we have. I do see a Thracian noble and then a Thracian noble general. And uh, these are going to be Thracian warrior, Thracian warrior, mercenary falcs, uh, another mercenary falcs, Thracian warrior, mercenary falcs. Okay, so a pretty good amount of infantry and with two of those being nobles at this funds level, if those nobles get used properly, they're going to be absolutely devastating. Uh, because remember, each player only gets 5,000 funds, um, so you have to use it wisely. Now, Sparta coming in with the support here, they have the Heroes of Sparta, and remember that all Spartan Hoplite units have the Elite 30 damage, 8 armor piercing spear, uh, the Hoplite spear, which is cool, and that's basically on all Elite Hoplites now, so it's good to see that. So Sparta definitely has some really solid Hoplites. They've got some Periocle spears, Helot Slingers, yep, I don't see any, are these Gorgos? No, Cretan Archers back here for Carthage, and then a Helot Javelinman supporting. So a, a, a pretty solid infantry line here in terms of some defense and some offense. I say some offense, pretty pretty dangerous offense and a little bit of defense there too with the Spartan Hoplites. Carthage is rolling the cavalry. They've got three Mercenary Numidian Cav. They have been adjusted. Um, Numidian cavalry now carry more javelins than any other jav cav, so it makes them unique. And I love that. We got Celtic light horse and Carthaginian cav supporting the bodyguard. And then back here, we do have a mercenary Numidian noble. I've seen these a lot in these sub commander battles, and if they get held until late and brought in, they are absolutely devastating. Um, so, really cool units. On the other side, I can see a couple of uh, lancer cav here. I thought it was cataphracts at first, but it's just Persian cavalry. But these guys are pretty good value. Um, shock cavalry, if I remember right, like their cost to performance is quite good. Thorax swords for Macedon. Oddly enough, it looks like Rome is playing the spear role, and they brought the slingers, and Rome does have decent skirmishing, and honestly, at this price point, Macedon is a pretty viable mainline faction to choose. And let's see where else. I'm, I'm assuming Armedia is going to roll the cavalry. They have a horse archer unit that already got a little shredded. But we can't see. They're uh, they're using the woods here quite wisely to conceal their forces and hopefully draw their enemies in. 
If they can skirmish out of the woods, it would give them a pretty significant advantage, especially with those Balearic Slingers firing from cover. Those Cretans, though, this is going to be interesting. If these things get held onto and used properly, they are devastating. Cretans do a tremendous amount of damage if given the opportunity and the targets. So let's see what happens here. I'm actually going to fast forward for a second, kind of see what plays out in the skirmish phase. I believe that was a flaming javelin. Yeah, a flaming, flaming shot there. So a little bit of skirmishing still going on here. Yeah, was, or no, it's a whistling shot. So it's reducing the, um, it's actually reducing the fire rate of the Numidian Cav that it hits. You don't see whistling shot used much, but it kind of makes sense. Not many units left. Might as well go for it. Look at that javelin throw by the Celtic Light Cav and then pulling out because the Vigiles don't have the javelins to sling back there. There is a Syrian Archer here. That'll help against the Cretans. I see two of those. That will help indeed against the Cretans. And then you have the Balearic Slingers, so... Some pretty significant skirmishing capability. I imagine there's still some units hidden in the woods, though, that we have yet to see. There has to be. So the skirmish begins, and these Balearic Slingers are in an almost unassailable position here from a skirmish standpoint. So I think that the, I'm going to call them the home team here, the blue and yellow banners are going to have to back up, or the Spartans aren't braced. They're still going to get pummeled pretty hard there by that cavalry. It won't last forever, and that was a nice follow-up by the Mercenary Falcons. They do a lot of... I think they have a secret bonus versus large, if I remember right, too, and they do AP damage. Those Spartans took a hit. That's a Rally and Inspire for this unit. Another Persian Cavalry Charge, and it does land in some of the Slingers. It was well-placed, but here comes a follow-up. Again, the Falcsmen. Uh, the Persian Cavalry are going to pay a pretty dear price for this, but they also got some some critically important damage done to the enemy skirmishers, and it was already an uphill fight. Now this I don't understand, the Thorax Sword coming out of cover and engaging early, and it is going to get completely and totally overwhelmed. I think it was covering the retreat of those Persian cavalry. It's now going to turn and flee. These Falcsmen are quick, though. Oh, nice, nice uh, job there. Yeah, they brought him in closer, now we're going to get a cycle from the, the Persian cav, so... The red team there doing a nice job hauling in their enemies a little closer to home. This is a dangerous position now for these Falcsmen. They are taking a beating. Uh, red team's been... I mean, both teams have dealt each other a little bit of damage, but, I mean, this was some interesting play here with those Persian cavalry and that back and forth. This is going to take a couple of mercenary Falcsmen out of the fight. It's not bad. And then the skirmish fight is heavily in favor of the red team at the moment. There are these mercenary Cretans. They're outside of range of the enemy skirmishers at the moment, but I do believe that effectively this, I think the home team's going to get forced into charging into the woods. Another Thracian warrior well out ahead of its support here, and there's Agrianians close by, and there's cavalry now plowing through with Armenia, and this is not just any cav, this is noble blood cav. These are very tough, or sorry, one of them's Cappadocian, one's noble blood, but still very good heavy cavalry. They want to be careful, though. Those Cretans are firing off in that direction. And Cretans, yeah, look at that. Already nine cavalrymen down. Cretans can cause a tremendous amount of damage to cavalry very quickly. And look here. These Numidian cavalry supporting... That was the Noble Cav supporting against these Thorax Swords. They're going to take a, a huge number of javelins to the back here. This is a lot of Jav Cav, and it is very dangerous. Comes the Noble Blood Cav giving pursuit here. The Noble Cav going to fall back and not allow itself to get wrapped up in a melee that early. More cheap units thrown in for the Odrissians. The Odrissians have thrown in quite a bit of their chaff. Not all of it. they still got two more units in reserve. Look at this missile fire coming out of the Carthaginian Cavalry. Very nicely done by the Red Team. And the Red Team just continues to skirmish with this Auxiliary Balearic Slinger now taking fire from the Cretans, but now the Cretans are under fire from the Syrians. And they have the cover of the woods. This is really not a great fight, uh, missile-wise, for the home team. But they're trying, you know, to, to get some headway here. They did tear that slinger up pretty bad. Pretty bad. Their helot slinger there. Let's see whether the uh, Cretan archers... No, they're going to get a fight in the shade. Oh, now that's going to be helpful here. That's going to be real helpful because the Cretans were taking a ton of damage. Look at this charge. That noble blood cap's going for it. They are going to get a piece of that Cretan. They were a little bit slow, but they are going to pick up a piece of it. They're, they're certainly going to get sacrificed, but they they did do some damage, and this Cretan archer is getting absolutely shredded at the moment. So the Cretans were 
far enough forward that the, the enemy did finally get a hold of them. There's horse archers there. Skirmish is very much in favor of the red team here. That noble blood calf sacrifice was probably worth it. I think one of the Cretans routed. Nope. No, never mind. They're still here, just one of them very nearly routed. That fight in the shade was good timing there because they were taking a lot of fire. Look at this, another cavalry swinging in, just desperate to get rid of these slingers and archers on the other side. I don't know though, like if this team gets rid of all their melee cavalry, they could find themselves being massively harassed late in the game by all this Carthaginian missile cav. We'll see what happens. Persian cavalry rolling in, here comes the Thracian nobles. If the enemy is able to... Yeah, that's what I was worried that might happen to the home team here. These Thracian nobles are now the subject of attention from multiple missile units. This could get real ugly for the home team real fast if they can't do something about these missiles because Thracians are not going to last long under that kind of withering uh, missile barrage. They do have their special ability which could help them and they probably need it because they're about to have to go charging forward. Remember that special ability was going to give them extra block chance and armor for a short period until it got into a second phase that was more melee centric. So let's see what happens. It does look like the uh, Odrysians are pushing forward. This noble was down almost 50%. Here comes the Thracians. I still don't see that special ability popped. And it, yep, there it goes. I was figuring it. They, well, no, it's another fight in the shade. And there is the Mountain Rage. So that's double missile block chance increase. I don't know how much it sends it up to. But that's a significant missile block chance for the Thracians at this point. You can see it is helping. They're dropping much slower to that missile fire. Let's see if it's enough for them to get in here because there's... I haven't seen a ton of infantry on the other side of this. That Royal Peltus is trying to sling some javelins into this fight. This fight is not going to last long. That Thracian Noble is going to hack through this blob in a big hurry. Those Agrionian Axemen, very nice units for this because the Odrysians, you know, not good block chance. They're kind of just kiting and fighting. Very nicely done there. Carthage has wrapped its cavalry back around now. And it looks like there's a group rally going on over here for the home team. Again, not a ton of infantry back here in reserve for the other team. They do have the Agrionians. They have this Royal Peltus. It is possible they have a few more things we haven't seen yet. But um, we'll see what happens here. This Thracian Noble is getting a lot of kills. It's going to cycle out of there for a moment and let those Spartans... Ooh, yeah, look at that nice fire by the, uh, the red team there. Red team is... Where are they? I'm trying to figure out where they're focusing their fire. I saw their archers just kind of slinging in this direction. Thracian warriors taking down a Vigile here. Alright, it says that this is in favor of the red team, and I get it, but it also kind of depends on how much ammunition they have left. Let's see what Carthage can do with this cavalry, too. They've been working these armored horse archers over here, and it looks like they may be attempting to trap them. Oh, the cavalry charge! Oh, boy. If those Syrians had ammo left, then this is a big loss for the Romans. A big loss if they had ammunition left. That Carthaginian cavalry is going to absolutely wreak havoc in here right now. And there's a fight in the shade, which is helping out too. Let's see. Yeah, it's a reload going on on the Numidian cavalry. They're firing into the back of those infantry. Yeah, you can see the battle starting to swing here. It's still very close, but I feel like that... The momentum was very much in favor of the red team up until that charge right there into the auxiliary uh, Syrian archers. Those archers were absolutely owning. Macedon still has a royal Peltus general, which could be tough to get rid of because the nobles are very worn down. But there is still a very healthy hero of Sparta back here. I say very healthy. It's taking a little damage. That's still going to be a potent unit. It's got 76 kills as well. There's an Agrionian holding on back here with some Spartan hoplites. I don't know how long that'll go on for. And then there's a Spartan harplite over here that should put down those auxiliary infantry. Right now they're just ignoring them, in fact, and heading over to that fight. Carthage is desperate to get rid of these skirmishers. I think the skirmishers still have some ammo, too, which is why they're running away. And then over here, that royal peltist is going to get engaged by Thracian warriors and the Thracian nobles. There is a loyalty of the 10th and shield wall going on for the Royal Peltist. Royal Peltist is going to be tough in this fight. They don't have great AP, but the Odrysians don't have a lot of armor. 
That second win right there, and then the Mountain Rage, that is going to be a big deal here for the Thracians. That second wind is going to bring them back up to fresh. Those Royal Peltas might might be uh, overwhelmed. Yeah, and then here comes the Spartans. I feel like the momentum is continuing to shift in favor of the home team and what was honestly a very wild battle here because the skirmishing from the outset, the red team was just winning and winning and winning, in my opinion. I mean, maybe I read that wrong, but that's certainly what it looked like to me. This uh, Macedonian Royal Peltas general is now in way over his head. Nice support, though, with battle rhythm. Use the whip. Gonna keep them in the fight, get as many kills as they can. I said the other units were low armor. You know who isn't? Is these Spartans, and the Royal Peltas is gonna struggle to kill them. Those are now moving on two to outflank, and it looks like a def well, I called it a close defeat. I don't know what just happened there in the replay. <laughs> I don't know, maybe the replay was bugged or something at the end, but we got to see most of it, and it didn't take me to the end screen either. I don't know what happened right there. It was a strange ending, but it was an epic battle nonetheless. Was it bugged? I didn't see a whole lot of behavior there that looked uber bugged. I have no idea. Hopefully it wasn't bugged. But regardless, I still felt like we had an entertaining one. And sorry that I can't see the stats there at the end. But I can go hit the replay and show you all who the players were. And we can thank them for the awesome battle. That one was submitted by Alpha Blue. Um, he was over on my Discord and placed it there. There's other people who have been putting Rome 2 replays in my Discord. And I apologize. I haven't seen them. But I got over there and I did see them. So I will try and get to those. You can send them to me a couple of ways. You can put them there in the Discord, or you can send them to me in an email at airtotalwar at gmail.com. But I also have the Discord, which I think I have a link to in the description. I know I have the link to Souls in the description. But it's Air Carthage Discord. It's in some of my Warhammer videos, if it's not in one of these. It's free to join. We're happy to have you there. There's players to talk to, different games you can play and just have fun. So in any case, Air of Carthage signing up for now. I'll see you all next time. Thanks to Number Soul. Ninja Keeper, Alexander, um, Bax, and War for an awesome game here. So we'll see you all soon with some more action in Total War Rome 2.